Hi, welcome. I'm especially excited to be doing this particular podcast today for a couple of reasons. First, I'm super enthusiastic about today's topic, which is perfect partnership between natural alignment and mindfulness. And I've got some really good stuff to share about that. And then the other reason is that today is the day I am finally recording a new podcast episode in over three years. I began this podcast in 2019, and I so enjoy doing it. And anyone who knows me knows that I'm more talkative than on the quiet side. <laughs> and podcasting has given me the opportunity to talk about a subject that means more to me than just about anything, except the wonderful people I love. And that would be skeletal alignment, a.k.a. natural posture. I know, I'm a bit of a weirdo, but I have my reasons, and they're good ones. Learning this completely transformed my life from chronic pain and stiffness to finally being pain-free, which has been working very well for me, going on almost 30 years now. And hey, I'm a realist, and at my age, I'm well aware that things will change up ahead. In fact, a lot has already changed. <laughs> but when it comes to mobility and ease of movement and freedom from pain, so far, so good. And as I've taught these concepts and shared them with a whole lot of other people, I've seen firsthand what a huge role our natural skeletal alignment plays in so many aspects of our overall health and well-being. But what really gets me riled up <laughs> is the infuriating fact that this specific information is so widely overlooked and misunderstood, even in or maybe especially in the medical world and the fitness and wellness community. Oh, yes, well-meaning doctors and health blogs and such remind us regularly that good posture is important and that we should sit or stand up straight, yada, yada. But unfortunately, they really don't know what that means. They have a skewed idea about what good posture is and why it really matters so much. And of course, it's not their fault. They simply haven't had a chance to learn about this yet. Actual good posture is not the lift your chest up and pull your shoulders back kind of posture that we were all taught to believe is good posture. This approach requires way too much tension and physical effort to maintain. This is a very unfortunate misconception that's been adopted over many years as the ideal posture in not just modern American society, but other places as well, especially places that are more technologically advanced. And the giant problem with this is that this kind of unnatural, overcorrected posture, and there's also the slouching and collapse kind too, that both of them together are the primary cause of so much of the chronic stiffness and pain that people experience. So I hope you will forgive me for repeating myself, but truly good posture is our natural, original, innate alignment that healthy, well-developing babies and toddlers everywhere in the world discover when teaching themselves how to become upright. They're just following instinctive inner impulses that drive them toward accomplishing nature's mandate for us as upright human beings. We need to look no further than those people in the world who never lose this alignment and move into old age with intact strength, flexibility, vitality, and relaxed comfort and ease. So why did I pause this podcast for over three years if I love talking about all of this so much? Well, the last episode was finished just before COVID came on the scene and turned all of our lives upside down. You remember that, right? <laughs> and for me personally, this meant all of a sudden packing up the wonderful life I loved and relocating to California so as 
not to be so isolated from my family and also to help with the care of my very young and oh so adorable and precious grandchildren. But since my daughter and her partner were now juggling working from home with their three and a half year old daughter also now at home and a new baby on the way. I'll just wrap up this little thaga by saying that landing here has turned out to be like winning the lottery. I think even better. <laughs> and I'm so grateful and just loving this new ride. So now it's May of 2023 and Mr. McBaby is two years old plus and life has settled down into a new kind of normal. And I'm now ready to start podcasting again. And so here begins part two of my grand podcasting adventure. And as I restart the podcast, I've decided to change its name from Align Now to the Mindful Body Podcast because this name better reflects the partnership between our body's natural alignment and the willingness to be mindful that is so helpful in guiding our level of success and applying these basic principles of skeletal or structural alignment to ourselves. So this is what we're going to be talking about today. How pairing natural alignment with mindfulness sounds like a wonderful smooth wine with this particular delectable dish. <laughs> but the two together represent the happiest of marriages, if I may. <laughs> a partnership made in heaven that enhances and expands the best qualities of each. This is the stuff that truly satisfying and enduring partnerships are made of. And if you want to be skilled in your body's natural alignment or mindfulness, study them both at the same time. It's one of the most beneficial things you can ever do for yourself, and you will never regret it. And the younger you are when you get started, the better. But taking this path at any age can dramatically enhance your life. And I've had the lucky good fortune to have been a student of both mindfulness meditation and natural alignment. I first became involved with mindfulness or insight meditation almost 40 years ago, soon after I began practicing yoga. And when I was first introduced to concept of natural alignment in 1996, I had already been trained as a massage therapist and was teaching yoga. And looking back now, I feel so grateful that I was able to successfully cobble together what I apparently needed from all this, as I certainly had no clue how valuable this would turn out to be. To combine these two very different but complementary practices of alignment and mindfulness and to be able to use them to finally find freedom from the long-standing pain I had struggled with for so long. Some of the pain plagued me during my years practicing and teaching yoga, and I'm not suggesting that yoga in and of itself is the culprit, but how I was doing yoga was the problem that helped cause the problem. Ditto for almost everything we do. So learning the details of skeletal alignment greatly boosted my already existing meditation practice. Mindfulness, when I did remember, guided me back to the present moment in my body over and over again, serving as an anchor of sorts. It's not just that the more aligned I became, the easier it was for me to sit for long periods without experiencing tension or pain although this did eventually become true. And this was especially valuable when I meditated from 4.30 a.m. until 9.30 at night, seven days a week for two months at a monastery in Burma in 2003. I had attended a number of retreats over the years, but nothing longer than two weeks. And while I had come far in learning and applying details of natural alignment to myself, I was ill-prepared for how difficult a two-month meditation would be. 
Knowing about natural alignment with little comfort during the first agonizing weeks. <laughs> In time, though, mm -hmm. things improved and my body mind relaxed and I began having profound experiences and mind states that I had never encountered before. My spine made of bony vertebra with a spinal cord running through it with cajillion motor and sensory neurons began to function sort of like a super highway, a powerful channel that transported rushing rivers of energy through my body and gave birth to chakra experiences like nothing I could have imagined. But much more significant, I believe, than these amazing but fleeting supernatural types of experiences, focusing my mind and attention on my alignment in real time took mindfulness off the cushion, so to speak, and helped me integrate it into daily life as I paid attention to how I was standing while washing the dishes or putting on my shoes or walking in the woods or standing in line at the grocery store or loading the groceries into the car or dancing to music or as I am sitting here right now recording this message. In other words, while doing anything and everything, as often as I'm able to be present, and many times I'm not, I fall short often. The point, though, is to have a willingness to begin again and again and again. And each time I mindfully focus on my skeleton and how my bones are aligned, however it is that I'm experiencing this, it serves as an anchor to mindfulness, and each reinforces the other, which is where the real silver lining in this partnership is found. Sometimes my good fortune feels boundless when it comes to having had the opportunity to bundle together alignment and mindfulness so that the benefits of applying both in support of each other have helped transform my life in this powerful way. And this is why I'm motivated to share this story with you so that some of the same benefits become available to you. I'm referring to someone's conscious awareness of themselves, even when applied to a body or especially when applied to a body that is limited by its own individual circumstances. So one doesn't have to be able to align one's body. One might want to move in that direction with that awareness. And while some adults may be more naturally mindful and aware than others, being mindful is a skill that anyone can learn through practice, and it can profoundly affect physical, mental, and emotional health. So when considering other ways of referring to mindfulness, such as using the word awareness or paying attention and being present, the practice of mindfulness can be thought of as a conscious art that we apply to learning how to be aware or how to pay attention or how to be present or what could also be called embodied presence with whatever is right now without judgment or reactivity. In recent years, mindfulness as a conscious art has grown tremendously in popularity and is now widely taught in hospital settings to help patients manage pain and stress, as well as in school classrooms where students learn to be more calm and attentive and focused. Other typical benefits of mindfulness are greater self-control and improved mental clarity and concentration, greater acceptance of what is, less attachment to certain outcomes, and enhanced relationships with others. Quite a lot of really good stuff that can come from cultivating mindfulness, which can then have exponential benefits when tethered to our innate human alignment. I talk about the role of mindfulness as a partner of natural alignment in a free workshop you can join and go through at any time. The workshop is also filled with lots of useful information about alignment detail, and you can check it out at kathleenporter.com forward slash registration dash page. 
And before I wrap this up, I just do feel that I should perhaps warn you that practicing mindfulness does have some drawbacks. I even heard of a recovery group recently called Mindfulness Anonymous, where people introduce themselves by saying their name and how long they've been stuck in the present moment. (laughs) Okay, I'll stop. I see you rolling your third eye at me. If this is your first time listening to my podcast, you know now that I love silly jokes and the cornier the better. Someone did send me an email once and he complained that my jokes were not very funny and that it was inappropriate for me to mix them in with talking about that's important and serious subject. Well, as you can see, I didn't take his advice, although maybe I should have. (laughs) After all, he's right about this being a serious and important subject. And maybe that's kind of the point of why I tell these silly jokes, because as passionate as I am about natural alignment and have been for several decades now, it can all be a bit dry and overly serious. And maybe I tell these jokes for my benefit to get some sort of comic relief from the intense amount of work that goes into all of this. Or maybe it's just that telling corny jokes is just sort of baked into who I am. I mean, my parents were both bakers and I was bred for this job. (laughs) Okay, that's it for now. Just see you next time. Thank you. Bye.